What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, a.k.a. NY Prepper. It is Wednesday, September 6th, 2023, and I have another emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now it is 6.04 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States. So we have another doomsday plane in the air today. Another one, second doomsday plane, okay? And this is the plane that the president would use during a nuclear war to command the entire U.S. military, including our nuclear forces, okay? So these planes are not in the air all the time. You know, they obviously don't want to put a ton of miles on these planes because just like cars, planes can uh, break down the more miles you put on them, okay? So to all the people out there that have been saying for the last month that, oh, this is normal, they fly these every day. No, they don't, okay? They're not going to put unnecessary miles on super expensive planes that we don't have a lot of that are custom built. They're not going to put thousands and thousands and thousands of miles on them for no reason. And in addition, it costs a ton of money to do that. Okay, so we've been seeing these doomsday planes every day in the air for the past month, and today two of them in the air. And this one, what's interesting about it is that it was over the Gulf of Mexico, okay, uh, which is very unusual because this is international water here, okay. So this thing was flying over international water. And uh, we also have a nuclear war command and control plane in the air right now uh, at the same time as this doomsday plane, okay? And the nuclear war command and control plane is responsible for communicating with our submerged nuclear armed submarines and our nuclear bombers, sending out nuclear attack options and launch orders, and also remotely launching all of our silo-based nuclear armed missiles in the event that ground-based command and control gets wiped out. So it's basically the most important plane in the military that people don't even know about. And it's up in the air right now at the same time as this presidential doomsday plane that was over the Gulf in international airspace. Very, very uh, unusual to say the least. Now, in addition to this, what's really concerning me is the escalation is really growing between NATO and Russia. And today we have some breaking news that the Minuteman 3 missile that the U.S. tested overnight last night from Vandenberg Air Force Base carried three reentry vehicles on it. OK, so a reentry vehicle is just a fancy scientific term for a warhead. OK. Uh, a dummy warhead. Obviously, it wasn't armed. It didn't have an actual nuclear warhead. These were just dummy warheads that simulated the regular warheads. So they have the same shape and the same weight. Okay. And so they had three of these warheads, dummy warheads, uh, on the Minuteman 3. Now, a lot of you guys probably don't know this, but the Minuteman 3 missile is only supposed to carry one warhead per missile uh, because of the uh, New START treaty that Obama negotiated with Putin when Obama was in office. That was back in 2012, I believe, is when they signed that. Okay. Now, if you remember a few months ago, Putin announced that Russia is going to pull out of the New START treaty. And he said that uh, that Russia is no longer going to abide by the uh, limitations in the New START Treaty. And so uh, it looks like the U.S. is now up arming its arsenal and it's doing it secretly without telling Russia. But it looks like what happened last night was the U.S. basically sending a signal to Russia. Listen, we're up arming our arsenal. So yeah, maybe you deployed your RS-28 Sarmat a few days ago, but guess what? We're going to now put two more warheads on each one of our Minuteman missiles, and we have 400 of those missiles deployed. Okay. 
So this is huge news, guys. The fact that they actually tested one with three warheads, okay, three dummy warheads, means that the U.S. is in the process of rearming their Minuteman three missiles to what they were pre-New START treaty, okay? They're maximizing the amount of warheads on our Minuteman three missiles, okay? That would basically triple the number of warheads that we have in our silos, okay? It would go from 400 warheads to 1,200 warheads, okay? Each one about 300 or 330 kilotons each. So that's a massive amount of firepower, and that's not including our submarines. We can also uparm those because due to the New START Treaty, we removed four missile tubes on each one of our 14 Ohio-class subs. So we drastically reduced the number of Trident missiles that we were that we were carrying. We were carrying 24 on each sub. That's 14 subs with 24 missiles each. Now we're down to 20 missiles on each of those 14 subs, and it's possible that we may be rearming those as well. Okay, but this is clearly a signal to Russia from the United States, okay, because Russia announced a few days ago that they were deploying their RS-28 Sarmat, which is a super heavy liquid-fueled ICBM that can carry large warheads and multiple large warheads. And because it's liquid-fueled, it is basically a first strike weapon because it takes up to two hours to fuel such a massive ICBM. So in terms of retaliatory strikes, it's not good because we would immediately target those RS-28 Sarmats as soon as nuclear war kicks off. They would be the first ones targeted. Okay, Any fixed targets would be immediately uh, eliminated within 30 minutes. And if it takes two hours to refuel, there's just no chance by the time they would be halfway fueled, they would be destroyed. So those are basically first strike weapons to be used against the United States in a massive preemptive first strike by Russia. Okay. And so here we have the U.S. uh, basically responding to what uh, Russia announced on Friday testing one of our Minuteman 3s with three dummy warheads, okay? So I'm going to just read to you a little bit of this press release here just to prove to you that, you know, this is legit. This is coming from Air Force Global Strike Command, okay? Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana, a joint team of Air Force Global Strike Command Airmen and the 30th Space Launch Delta Guardians launched an unarmed Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile equipped with three test reentry vehicles September 6th at 1.26 a.m. Pacific time from Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. So that would be uh, 4.26 a.m. Eastern time, okay? So three test reentry vehicles, okay, right here. And they say that this is a routine test, but I don't, uh, uh, yes, it is routine. They do test these every year, but the timing of it literally just like not even a week after Russia announced they were putting their RS-28 on combat deployment and testing three reentry vehicles with it. Yeah, I don't believe that that's routine. And uh, here we have an official video uh, release from the Air Force that I'm going to play for you. And they mentioned that there were three test vehicles. Okay, so let's watch this together. Air Force Global Strike Command Airmen conducted an operational test launch of an unarmed Miniman 3 intercontinental ballistic missile September 6 to demonstrate the readiness of the U.S. nuclear forces and provide confidence in the lethality and effectiveness of the nation's nuclear deterrent. Today's test launch used a randomly selected intercontinental ballistic missile pulled from F.E. Warren Air Force Base, Wyoming. The missile was transported more than 1,300... So they pulled a random missile out of one of the missile fields in F.E. Warren Air Force Base. They pulled a random missile out of a silo and then transported it to California. 
They, they disassembled it before transporting it, then they reassembled it, and then they fired it from, from Vandenberg. 100 miles and reassembled at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. The ICBM was equipped with three test re-entry vehicles and traveled approximately 4,200 miles at a speed of... Okay, so there you have it right there. It was equipped with three test re-entry vehicles. Space Force Base, California. The ICBM was equipped with three test re-entry vehicles and traveled approximately... The ICBM was equipped with three test re-entry vehicles. The ICBM was equipped with three test re-entry vehicles and the ICBM was equipped with three test re-entry vehicles and traveled approximately 4,200 miles at a speed of more than 15,000 miles per hour to a test range near the Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands. The ICBM test and evaluation program helps validate the re- So here's one of the stages dropping off. The, they have three like rocket stages they call them boosters basically and they drop off as it flies up into space liability the nuclear umbrella our allies and partners rely on eliminating the need to obtain their own nuclear weapons to counter potential adversaries the 50 year old minuteman 3 is based in colorado montana nebraska north dakota and wyoming and will be replaced by the lgm 35a sentinel reporting from vandenberg space force base I'm Senior Airman Tierra Sibley. So that's just huge news, guys. I want to give you an update on Hurricane Lee. We now have Hurricane Lee. It was Tropical Storm Lee. And before that, Tropical Depression 13, which I think is a weird number for a uh, tropical cyclone, a bad luck number. And hopefully we won't have bad luck with this one because this thing is turning out to be a monster and they're saying it's going to have 150 mile per hour sustained winds 72 hours from now. The forecast has not changed much. Okay, they're still having this thing up to a category four storm, possibly a category five. There are a lot of models showing it going up to 180 mile per hour sustained winds, which is very possible because you have record warm waters in the Caribbean right now. Um, so it's still too early to tell exactly where this thing is going to go. Um, you know, there's been a lot of trolls commenting on my videos, uh, saying that this thing is going to turn away and that I should show the, the spaghetti models because the spaghetti models are showing it turning away. Well, guys, you have to remember that models are only accurate up to like three days out. So we really don't know beyond three days where this thing is going to go. Okay, that's why the National Hurricane Center is not showing it that going that far yet because they don't know. They're not 100% sure. Okay, so it could still turn away. That's what we should be praying for. Okay, but it's a 50 50 chance right now that this thing could directly hit the US or it could turn away. If it does hit the US as a Cat 4, Cat 5, you know, this thing is going to have plenty of wide open, warm water. If it strengthens to 170 mile per hour winds and makes landfall, that's like the equivalent of a nuclear bomb. Okay. The devastation, the, the destruction is the equivalent of a nuclear bomb. Okay. Just to put it in perspective, probably more destruction than a nuclear bomb, multiple nuclear bombs. Okay. So uh, we already have uh, circulation going on here. You can see an eye is already starting to develop here it just turned into a hurricane so it's still relatively weak but uh it is starting to circulate here around the center and uh here's the latest cone and some people were complaining about this cone saying that it's not accurate that i should show the spaghetti model again you can't go by a model because you know you're talking about over a week away OK, a, a lot can happen in, in a week. So, you know, you don't want to base everything off of a model, uh, especially that far out. But they're pretty confident that this thing is going basically directly west, northwest, kind of going directly towards Florida and Georgia. OK, so uh, I'm going to keep an eye on this and uh, want to just show you guys my website here. Uh, I have a lot of good information on my website about survival and prepping and in particular nuclear war survival so if you go to my website newyorkprepper.com you go to the top and you click uh, prepping references and you'll see a bunch of articles that i wrote and these are free you don't have to pay anything for them 
These are just, you know, reference articles. Here I have like blast and overpressure cheat sheet. I have best bug out locations in America. And if you scroll down, you'll see a lot of nuclear war stuff. Here I have nuclear war targets in Europe, nuclear war targets in Canada. Here I have a map showing all of the U.S. Uh, nuclear missile silo fields. Okay, so you can see where those missile fields are. These are major targets in a nuclear war. So you don't want to be anywhere downwind of these missile fields. Okay, and I have exact locations of the silos. So you can see if you live near them and how close you are. Uh, potassium iodide doses for children, criti critical radiation doses, radiation shielding, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm going to be adding more, but that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Okay. Uh, the U S testing a Minuteman three missile with three reentry vehicles. Uh, you know, that's clearly a sign to Russia that, uh, you know, we're going to be up arming our arsenal now. So, um, you know, things are continuing to escalate. Doomsday planes in the air daily. Um, it's just so much going on. It's hard to keep track of. And now we have all these new variants coming out. I'm actually sick right now, guys. I got sick over Labor Day. I've been feeling so lousy the last few days. I'm finally starting to feel better today, but I still have like a weird fever and kind of like a light cold. So, you know, just protect yourselves. There's all kinds of weird stuff going on. You know, it's back to school time now. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, interaction with people, you know, there's a lot of people out at stores and things like that. So just, you know, protect yourselves, do what you need to do. Uh, you know, whatever you feel like you need to do to protect yourself. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but, um, you know, there's definitely something going on. I know a, a lot of people, in my circle, in my family that, you know, I have friends and things like that that have caught something. So I don't know if this is the new variant or what, but, um, you know, just wanted to give you a heads up and uh, hopefully I'll be able to go live at the end of this week sometime, maybe tomorrow night or Friday night. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three P's. Prepare, practice and persevere.